Chapter 101, the trio reconvened in front of the sandy beach, they were stranded on this hellish island, now known as Skull Principles Island, and gathered to deliberate their next course of action, Ihan was the first to speak, is it possible to build another boat? Silence followed, Onlego shook his head, even crafting a small boat required more resources and effort than expected, originally, he was able to make it with the help of other white tiger students but it was difficult for him to do it on his own, it seems we can't escape on our own. I'm sorry, it's all right, but now, we face another problem, at Ihan's serious tone, on Lego, and Dukma tensed up, it was Wardenaz, who also defeated the undead who ruled this sandy beach, what could be so troubling to him, what, what is it? If things continue this way, we'll miss tomorrow's classes, silence enveloped them, initially, both thought Wardenaz was joking, but Ihan was gravely serious, it's not a joke? Do I look like I'm joking? No, sorry, in this situation? Shouldn't we be allowed to skip class? Dukma, puzzled, inquired, Ihan responded in a threatening tone, one must never skip classes, regardless of the circumstances, understand? Grades were more important than life itself, Despite not fully grasping this concept with their minds, the students felt its importance in their hearts, it seemed genuinely crucial, though the reason was unclear, I understand, I apologize as well, but warden as, it seems we have no means to attend tomorrow's class, the sun was already setting, marking the arrival of the weekend evening. With the new week approaching, classes were set to begin in the morning. Could they escape in time, wouldn't someone notice our disappearance and come to rescue us? Ihan posed the question to them, waiting for rescue seemed more realistic than building a boat to escape, but the duo shook their heads, even if noticed, immediate rescue isn't feasible, there are no boats available, why is the white tiger, a place of nights, lacking in unity? Ihan reprimanded them? The duo felt unjustly accused, this didn't seem to be a matter of unity, fortunately, Monday morning's lecture is on basic magic character education, Ihan pondered, having Skull Principal's lecture scheduled for tomorrow could be considered lucky, if the principal remarked during class, has anyone gone to the island for a pass? No? That won't do, I'll give you a chance. Go to the island this time, Ihan and his companions could be rescued without effort, but? Would the Skull Principal really do that? Would the Principal's character lead him to say, I'll help a bit, if everyone failed the assignment, or was it more likely he would say, can't even do this? Try harder? While Ihan was deep in thought, Onlego had a realization, that's it. If we're absent until the class starts, Everyone will definitely notice our disappearance, and the principal will come to rescue us. We just need to hold out until then, no? We should explore the island immediately, we have to escape on our own, stunned by Ihan's response, the two were speechless, couldn't someone come to rescue us, me? That's unlikely, but if a student is missing by the time of the class, out of concern, that's unlikely, Ihan firmly asserted his point leaving the other two disheartened, regrettably, this is reality, having joined the Magic Academy, it was time for Onlego and Dukma to face the harsh truth, without any hope of rescue from outside, they needed to find a way out from here. Ihan intended to search for other items prepared by Skull Principal, there must be other things besides the pass and the trials to reach it, perhaps even the small boat they had brought could be hidden somewhere, a rumbling stomach broke the silence. Ihan turned to see Onlego blushing with embarrassment, his head bowed, you must be hungry after all that activity, it's better to eat something, do we have any food? Ihan's question was met with confident nods from both, then let's eat before we proceed, with that, Ihan pulled out bread and canned food from his backpack. Onlego retrieved some tree bark, Ihan initially thought Onlego was using it as a makeshift plate, however, Onlego held the white bark and said to Dukma, Dukma, let's boil some water, we'll cook and eat this, wait, wait. Onlego and Dukma looked at Ihan, puzzled, Ihan, eyeing the tree bark, asked, you eat that? 
On Lake Ogrand, a mix of pride in his knowledge, he was pleased to know something Ehan didn't, warden as, the inner bark of this tree is edible, if boiled well, it's quite tender and sweet, Ehan sighed, frustrated, it was one thing to be short on food, but boiling tree bark to eat, I heard white tiger students hunt for meat, was I mistaken? We do hunt, but the quantity is often insufficient, warden as, you seem unaware, not everything hunted is caught? And preservation is difficult, most of the catch is eaten immediately, making it unsuitable for emergency rations, as the two white tiger students smugly explained, Ihan nearly lost his temper, he felt a pang of sympathy for them, being human after all, I brought something, so let's eat together. Really? That tomato vegetable stew? Warden S. famed tomato vegetable stew was already legendary, known even among white tiger students. No, I don't carry canned tomatoes or vegetables by the lake, I only brought simple things for myself, and they're not plentiful? We'll have to look for more nearby, the pair was slightly disappointed at Ehan's words, after all, Warden S. couldn't have foreseen this situation. Who would have thought they'd end up stranded on an island while scouting around a lake? Ihan pulled out a pot, a glass bottle of olive oil, butter, salt, pepper, eggs, slightly stale white bread, and pickled bacon from his leather backpack. The sight left the other speechless. He said he only brought simple things for himself. How well do the Blue Dragon kids live? They had never felt embarrassed or regretful about being assigned to the White Tiger but at this moment, they couldn't. Help but feel a bit envious, how did he manage to secure all that, it's still not enough, not enough. Isn't that plenty? I saw some edible mushrooms earlier, we should gather some, as Ihan stood up, the others followed suit, why are you getting up? I said I'd be your arm earlier, didn't I? I can't let you go alone, the two spoke with a certain solemnity. But Ihan asked them coolly, Do you know how to identify mushrooms? I think I got it right once out of three times, last time, we'd probably end up with two of us dead? Never mind, just dig up what I tell you to, knowing which mushrooms to pick was crucial, only the familiar ones should be gathered, it was vital not to harvest any that seemed even slightly off or ominous, aware of this. Ihan instructed them to pick only the mushrooms he was certain about, dig up that brown mushroom, don't touch that one, throw that one away, it looks strange, the two white tiger students, gathering mushrooms in place of the injured Ihan, slowly gained confidence in their task, could they now identify mushrooms themselves, this dull and rough-looking mushroom is safe, right? Throw it away before you put it in your mouth. Onleko obediently tossed the mushroom aside, however, Dukma seemed reluctant to give up, continuously attempting his own creative identifications, what about this mushroom, this one looks safe to eat, I think I've seen it on the table when I was younger, the shape is similar to the one we picked earlier, isn't this edible? Watching Dukma's earnest attempts to become proficient in mushroom gathering, Ihan, to encourage him, said, yes, that mushroom can be eaten, but only once, oh, wait, why only once? Because you'll die if you eat it, Dukma also quietly tossed the mushroom aside and only picked the ones Ihan instructed. Having finished their preparations, the trio built a campfire, when Ihan used flint instead of magic to start the fire, Onlego was puzzled, why use flint? Warden as considers the taste in cooking, Grandma told me that fire lit by hand rather than by magic, is better for cooking, is that so? The reason Ihan used flint was simple, to avoid accidentally burning the two students with a magic-induced fire. Instead of explaining, Ihan heated the pan with butter and oil. The secret to deliciously cooking mushrooms was patience and high heat. Tossing them in prematurely would be a mistake, but honestly, since joining the academy, my cooking skills have improved immensely. It wasn't a joke, his cooking skills had indeed surpassed his magic skills, constantly considering how to make a variety of tasty dishes with limited ingredients had naturally honed his skills, with proper funding and support, becoming a chef might be a better choice than a mage, 
The mushrooms sizzled as they absorbed the oil and butter in the pan. E. Han skillfully rolled the mushrooms to the side and added the cut-up hardened bread to the remaining oil. When the entire process was finished, and he even skillfully cracked an egg into the pan, the two white tiger students can't help but be amazed. These kids seem more impressed than when they heard about me defeating the undead summon. Let's eat. Ihan seasoned the mushrooms, bread, and fried eggs with salt, balancing the flavors. The trio devoured the food without a word. The fried mushrooms were crispy, and the hardened bread had become moist with oil. On Lego suddenly felt his eyes. Welling up with tears, I never thought we'd have such a meal again, me neither, on Lego, I thought we'd never eat like this again in our lives. Psst. You've only been here a month, observing the two white tiger students becoming overly sentimental, Ihan silently continued eating, despite their emotional state, the students, evidently very hungry, eagerly consumed their food, suddenly, there was a rustling sound from behind. Ihan swiftly threw the bowl he was holding to the side and grabbed his staff, on Lego, almost reflexively, dived to catch the thrown bowl, who's there? Emerging from the bushes was a water spirit, the water spirit seemed to be angry at the freshmen who were building a bonfire instead of doing the trials they were told to do, it approached erratically, its form swelling in an irregular pattern, signaling its readiness to attack at any moment. Ihan also stood up, staff in hand, ready to retaliate, he was quicker to act, attack, before Ihan could finish his spell, the water spirit, startled, began to flee. E? Chapter 102 As the water spirit fled, Ihan also ceased his incantation and shouted, Halt right there! Upon reflection, all this trouble stemmed from those water spirits in the lake. Had they not come first, Ihan could have leisurely tossed the white tiger guys onto the sandy beach to thoroughly check them, warden as, fighting a spirit in an injured state is a bit risky. Dukma, intending to dissuade him, changed his words upon seeing the fleeing spirit, no, it's not dangerous. Let's chase. Onward. Just, just a moment. On Lego hurriedly wrapped his food in leather. It was too precious to simply leave behind, chase it. It must be an underling of the Skull Principle. Ihan commanded in a voice colder than the chill of the darkening night, the two white tiger students ran off, feeling as if they had become the villains, despite not doing anything wrong, they couldn't shake off the feeling that they were, on Lego dodged to the left, a sharp water bead flew towards him, but he narrowly avoided it, Dukma turned right. A water spike came at him, but he ducked just in time. The attacks of the water spirits are really simple. Ihan thought this as he approached from the center. The water spirit launched an attack at Ihan, who, instead of dodging, summoned a water bead and deflected it. Jorvan II, an undead summon on the sandy beach, was a big and powerful creature, but such a low level water spirit could not defeat Ihan in a frontal confrontation. The water spirit shivered in panic as Ihan, exuding a fierce mana, approached, Do not flee. Water spirit, I mean you no harm? On Lego, aiming his wooden sword at the water spirit, thought to himself, In such a situation, would anything be believed? If On Lego were the water spirit, he would certainly not trust easily, You're an underling of the skull principle, aren't you? The water spirit shook its head vehemently. Though lacking the skill to converse with spirits, the white tiger students somehow felt they understood what the water spirit was trying to say, absolutely not, it seemed to convey, the water spirit, by its nature, evoked sympathy, its round, watery form, emanating a gentle water aura, softened people's hostility, but Ihan was not swayed, do not try to deceive me, the skull principle must have ordered you to do this. Dukma was astonished, was that the case? Yet the water spirit again shook its head desperately, Ihan pointed out calmly, then why did you attack us crossing the lake? And even when we were resting? Indeed. Confronted with Ihan's logical argument, the students had to agree, certainly, the water spirit's persistent pursuit and attacks were unusual, the water spirit flailed, pointing at Ihan. 
what's that? Both were clueless as to why the spirit was behaving this way, of course, Ihan understood, it's saying it thought I came to attack them, with that, even Ihan had nothing to retort. After all, it was he who had first unleashed his fierce mana over the lake, Wardenaz, what is this spirit saying? It thought that your rowing was an attack, ah, Onlego was at a loss for words to the water spirit, it was a mistake, he insisted, had I known there were water spirits, I would have been much more careful, I hope you believe that, the water spirit looked perplexed at Anglego's excuse, as if questioning what he was talking about, was this some sort of joke after Ihan had just declared himself fearsome? Instead of responding verbally, Ihan nodded in agreement. He says he understands that mistakes can happen, that's a relief. However, there's no excuse for attacking us while we were resting, even if the incident at the lake is overlooked, Ihan quickly moved on from the incident at the lake, considering it fruitless to dwell on it, the water spirit fell for Ihan's cunning ploy, forgetting to mention the incident at the lake, it pointed directly at the campfire, are you saying you attacked us because of the fire we lit at night? What nonsense! The white tiger students were infuriated, from the spirit's perspective, intruders cooking and emitting smells might have been unpleasant. But to attack without a warning was far too aggressive, in its confusion, the water spirit trembled all over, indicating a misunderstanding, it pointed at the campfire, the scorched marks, and Ihan's staff, both students were baffled again, but Ihan understood immediately, hmm, it was angry because I burned the surroundings. The fire he had recklessly spread while battling the undead had polluted the nearby water, understandably upsetting their sting water spirit. What is the spirit? Saying, Warden as? It's sincerely apologizing for its narrow minded actions. Humph, will we forgive it? Yes, it's a spirit, after all. The two white tiger students decided to be magnanimous, unlike the undead. Spirits were a more delicate entity to handle, especially water spirits. The spirit, sensing the odd turn of the conversation, glared intently at Ihan. Ihan chose to ignore it. The water spirit was not an underling of the skull principle, but it had been a distant observer when the principal visited the island. Following the spirit's lead, Ihan inquired, What exactly did the principal use in his spell? While Ihan might not know all of the skull principle's magic, for knowledge of his capabilities could prove advantageous, the spirit couldn't speak, but it inflated and transformed its body, earnestly trying to explain. A tomb? A seal? A lock? It formed a small tomb shape, added a few bands representing seals, and even something resembling a lock, Ihan began to grasp what the spirit was trying to convey, the principal has imprisoned something. There was only one thing that could be imprisoned, it was the leave permit, it wouldn't be surprising if something happened when we approached it, Ihan closed his eyes, trying to envision the principal's mindset, if I were the principal, how would I have designed it? A dungeon of trials beneath the sandy beach, and a place with the leave permit accessible only after passing through that dungeon, sounds like something the principal would do? And if that place was locked, it was even more in line with the principal's thinking, imagine the despair after struggling through the underground dungeon of the sandy beach, only to find the leave permit at the end locked away, it was precisely the kind of situation the principal would relish, warden as, over there. Onlego whispered in a startled voice, beyond where the water spirit halted, there indeed lay a place created by the principal, it was a small but antiquely charming, stone-constructed area. Ihan felt an inexplicable sense of it being akin to a temple, stone stairs leading underground, seemingly connected to the sandy beach's underground dungeon, large stone pillars, geometrically arranged on all sides with hollow interiors, and a central altar, of course, what lay inside the altar was not a sacrificial offering, but rather, the leave permit, how do I send these two in first? Ihan pondered how to get on Lego and Dukma to enter ahead of him, to uncover the principal's traps, a sacrificial lamb, or rather, an advance party was needed, Warden as, I'll go first, on Lego, are you insulting me? 
I should go first, Dukma, it's my fault this situation arose, I was the one who angered the water spirit. On Lego, you've completed your duty by building and steering the boat, compared to that, I haven't done anything, if I don't step forward now, my honor as a knight is, Ihan yawned, then tossed a coin, clack, dash, heads, on Lego Alpha, you go, uh, erm, on Lego walked forward with a somewhat dazed expression, he had initially planned to enter first for the injured warden as, but why did he feel so confused now? Come if you dare. Swallowing his solemn feelings, on Lego surveyed his surroundings? Even as a scion of a knightly family, one would have heard about magic traps, Unlego was prepared to withstand whatever traps might be triggered, yet, no trap was sprung, not when he stepped on the well-fitted stone floor, not even as he passed between the stone pillars and approached the altar, Ihan was slightly surprised at this sight, could it be that the skull principle set it to activate only when two people ascend? The absence of traps was just as unsettling. Ihan was also focusing all his power to detect any magic or mana around, but he felt nothing, either it was truly absent, or the skull principle's skills were too advanced for Ihan to notice, it's probably the latter. In fact, there were no traps, Ihan could be confident in this sensory aspect, having even impressed the professors and the skull principle, but Ihan did not think so, impossible, the skull principle must have done something, Warden as, there's a note written here by the principal, what does it say? That the traps are starting now? No, not that, congratulations on making it this far, young freshman, you may have been flustered by the sudden trials, but all of this is a process to nurture you young mages, dash annoyingly kind? Ihan thought to himself, the skull principal's kindness felt even more frightening, by coming here, you freshmen must have learned to cooperate with friends from different towers, now, use that learned method for the ultimate cooperation, if you place someone inside these stone pillars, the seal on the altar containing the leaf permit will be released, the trio turned their heads to look at the side, the large stone pillars, hollow inside, was spacious enough to easily fit a person, if placing someone inside those pillars was the key, whether the altar opens or not, doesn't this just take them further away from getting the outing pass? This is absurd. There must be another way. Dukma erupted in anger, as someone hailing from a knightly family, he couldn't accept a trap that would separate students who had diligently united their strength to overcome trials, surely there had to be another method. It seems unlikely, in contrast, Ihan remained composed, such a scenario was exactly the kind of thing the Skull Principle would relish, and it didn't surprise him in the least, even if many joined forces, in the end, only one would obtain what they desired. If they felt aggrieved, they should improve their skills? Such nonsense, no doubt, Ihan pondered, should he overpower Dukma first, or should he subdue on Lego first, Ihan was at a disadvantage, because three people arrived at the altar, where normally two people would have arrived, moreover, wasn't one of his arms injured, to win, he needed to strike first before the white tiger guys could attack, Warden as. Dukma shouted, Ihan flinched, has he caught on? Stop on Lego. At that, Ihan looked up to see on Lego rushing toward the stone pillar. Ihan hesitated for a moment, wondering whether he should stop him or feign weakness and leave him be. Chapter 103 Inch on Lego, What Are You Doing? Dukma, I will be the one to sacrifice, on Lego spoke with grave determination, of course, the evil deeds committed by that wardenaz can never be forgiven, but, these kids, they are too persistent, thought Ihan to himself. It seems like it's time to forget the grudges of the past, if Wardenaz hadn't helped us this time, we would still be trapped in the dungeon, we can't deny that. I will yield this outing pass to Wardenaz and earn the next one with my own strength. On Lego, your nobility has earned my respect, I will join you. Dukma, who had tried to stop him, was also persuaded by Anglego's words, if only one among them was to have the outing pass. 
It had to be warden as of the Tower of the Blue Dragon. Ihan was deeply moved for the first time by the conscientious behavior of the White Tiger boys. So these kids do have a conscience after all. Ihan was happily ready to shout, then go ahead and enter. But the water spirit urgently grabbed his sleeve. The water spirit gestured frantically, as if asking him to stop them. Ihan didn't understand, but he could feel the urgency of the spirit. Understood, burst forth. A water orb swiftly flew and tripped the running friends from the white tiger. The two who fell forward rolled on the ground. The students looked at Ihan with baffled expressions and exclaimed, What are you doing, Warden As? What is this madness? Having tripped them, Ihan realized he might have done it too harshly. If I say I tripped them because the spirit told me to, they'll probably explode with anger. Ihan thought of a different reason to appease them. Honor was always a good thing? Thing? Would I, who carries the name of a noble family, accept an outing pass, gained through another sacrifice? While the two were too shocked to speak, Ihan whispered softly to the water spirit, If you stopped me for no good reason, I'll lock you up in there. The water spirit, trembling at Ihan's words, began to explain, it pointed at the pillar, at the student, and made an X, with its hands, Ihan felt a flash of intuition, could it be that even if we put a student in, it won't open? The water spirit nodded its head. Ihan was astounded, he thought he had begun to understand the mind of the skull principle, but really, the principle was beyond his grasp, what kind of person is this, the door won't open even if we put a person in. How has he not been assassinated until now? Ihan slowly moved towards the altar, now, he was certain there were no other traps nearby, it was better that there were no traps around for them to realize that after fighting each other and one being trapped, the altar still wouldn't open, let's find another way, there must be a way to open it, Warden as, Onlego nodded with a trembling voice, still overwhelmed by emotion. Ihan powerfully poured his mana onto the altar, just like he had done at the White Tiger Tower before, bang, a powerful collision of magic, inaudible, spread out, the water spirit, startled, lay down, this, what is this? What on earth? I tried to dispel the magic with my mana, but I failed, Ihan lamented, Dukma expressed his disappointment and then hesitated, wait, didn't Warden Az use this to infiltrate last time? The students of the White Tiger were still unable to figure out how Warden As had managed to breach the magic at the entrance of the rest area with his friends. How exactly did he break through the entrance's magic? But now, looking at it, could it be, Ihan tried various methods, such as knocking on the altar, exploring the structure by flowing in mana, and shaking it be firing mana. However, the altar remained unmoved. At this point, Ihan began to doubt. Isn't it enchanted with defensive magic? If it were protected by magic as he had experienced before, there would have been some reaction, no matter how cunningly and delicately it was cast, it was too quiet. Initially, Ihan thought it was because of the Skull Principle's superior magic skills and his own lack of ability, but then he thought there was no harm in trying, everyone, step back. As Ihan conjured a water mass several times larger than usual and began to slowly add rotation, the two students from the White Tiger were perplexed, it's better to keep some more distance? Though they didn't understand fully, sensing something ominous, the two slowly backed away, the water spirit, even before Ihan spoke, had already moved a considerable distance away? Bang! Although Professor Bolotti had warned not to be greedy for rotating attributes, if a professor's duty was to trouble the students, then a student's duty was to disobey and rebel against the professor's words. Ihan, following this principle, ignored Professor Bolotti's advice and once again perfected the water bullet. It took over ten minutes, but it was worth it. The rotating, exploding mass of water collided with the altar and completely shattered it. On Lego and Dukma, startled by the loud noise, ducked, they had kept their distance but hadn't anticipated such power. The force not only destroyed the altar, but also devastated its surroundings. What kind of magic is that? Both felt chills run down their spines?
They had seen Ihan use water elemental magic before, but never to this extent. They had studied magic together under Professor Garcia, but where did this magic come from? Did he find forbidden magic in the library? It must be a secret of the Wardeness family. Ihan staggered with a tired expression, his mana was overflowing, but concentrating on a single spell for over ten minutes had strained his nerves. It was no surprise he was exhausted, swoosh, just then, the black book gifted by the Skull Principal, as if alive, slipped out of Ihan's pocket, it opened on its own, flipping pages and spilling out words like before, the shock of knowledge being hammered directly into his brain. When the shock subsided, the new magic knowledge left in Ihan's mind was Gonadalt's sharp hand. A second circle physical enhancement spell that bestowed a chilling sharpness to a mage's hand, but why now? What's the meaning of this? Ihan looked at the black book incredulously, but the book, as if it had done its job, paid no heed and slipped back into his pocket. Is it mocking me for crudely smashing it? Could it actually be? The possibility was frightening. Ihan couldn't be 100% sure that this black book wasn't an evil grimoire. Warden as, are you okay? I'm fine. Go and look for the outing pass. Ihan's words were meant for own Lego. But the water spirit rushed forward excitedly, the leopard bone summon watched the water spirit and, seeming angry, struck the ground, Ihan wanted to explain to the water spirit that it was a misunderstanding, but he was too tired to muster the energy, pitter-patter the water spirit respectfully searched for and presented the outing pass, although covered in some dust due to the destruction of the altar, the pass was intact, you did it. Warden as. You've done it. You overcame all those traps and succeeded. Both were as delighted as if it were their own achievement. The water spirit, noticing the mood, also clapped. Ihan carefully examined the outing pass. It was of the same format as the one he had received before, a rectangular piece of paper with the phrase granting one day of outing to the student possessing the outing pass, complete with the principal's signature. Bring that flat rock over here. Why, Warden S? I don't know what you plan to do, but you can rest a bit first. No, I'm doing it now. Ihan took out a quill and several ink bottles from his backpack. When he first used the outing pass, what Ihan regretted most was not the inability to use carriages or summon creatures. The greatest regret was not being able to forge the pass. Creating a fake pass wasn't easy. It required paper of a suitable material and various colors of ink. Ihan had meticulously gathered the necessary items from outside and completed his collection with what he couldn't find from Professor Jurger's workshop, always ready to create a counterfeit as soon as he got his hands on an outing pass. Could it be? Is he really doing it now? Onlego and Dukma were astonished. At first, they denied it, but the more they looked, the more apparent it became. He's forging it, Warden as. What on earth? Ihan, with the solemn expression of a skilled artisan, laid out his tools on the rock. The atmosphere was so serious that the two couldn't even bring themselves to speak, move, at Ihan's command, the quill slightly lifted into the air. The magic originally used to manipulate quills had finally found its true purpose while immense skill was needed to use lesser control more delicately than a human hand, for Ihan, that was already a tale of the past, Professor Bellotti's theories of magic combat were now blooming at the fingertips of his disciple, in the form of Ferjingan outing pass, the two gaped as they watched a fake pass being skillfully and swiftly completed before their eyes. This is preposterous, such audacity. Is this even possible? While Ihan and the students of the White Tiger were stranded on the island in the lake, the students of the other towers were busy with their tasks, among them, the students of the Tower of the Blue Dragon remained in the rest area, flipping through books, trying to figure out the remaining potions, ah, if I had that potion again, maybe I could figure it out, can't we have it back? Someone tie up Ganondo, please, where did Wardenas go? He went to check the lake. 
He said we should prepare our own lunch. Ihan had even sorted out the ingredients in front of the rest area's campfire before leaving. Seeing the ingredients, the students' faces lit up with a faint excitement. Having always been served by servants, the sudden opportunity to cook ignited a newfound creativity in them. Can I try making a pie? Sure. What kind of pie? I read about it in a book once, a pie baked with fish inside. It looked delicious. You're disqualified. Why? Despite some friction, the students of the Tower of the Blue Dragon enjoyed cooking and waited eagerly. But Ihan did not return. Why isn't Wardenas coming? Ganondo, you rascal, did you upset Wardenas? No, no. I did all the assignment by myself. Was it because you were noisy during last night's dinner? You should eat quietly with gratitude, but you acted without manners, ugh, like children anxious about their parents who hadn't returned late from work. The students were worried, we can't just sit here, I'll go check the lake, me too, let's go together. The students of the Tower of the Blue Dragon gathered and hurried to the lakeside. However, Ihan, who had already departed, was nowhere to be seen at the lake. The students of the Tower of the Blue Dragon, who had hoped against hope that Ihan might be there, began to feel a creeping fear. Let's search around. Maybe he went somewhere else. Ask around. The students of the Tower of the Blue Dragon dispersed to inquire separately. During their search, some heard astonishing news. Students from the White Tiger have disappeared? Those empty-headed fools? What happened? They're saying the White Tiger guys kidnapped Warden as. The White Tiger guys? Wait. Is that even possible? Chapter 104 Yonair expressed her doubts upon hearing that the White Tiger students had kidnapped Ihan. She wondered if it was even possible. Ratford, who had been among the Black Tortoise students, tilted his head in confusion and said, It seems difficult, doesn't it? No, it's possible, Nilia said with a face full of worry. Her long ears drooped down to either side, weighed down by concern. The cleverest of beasts can fall into traps. But Ihan is not a beast. What if the cowardly white tiger had set a trap on the path warden as walks? Or poisoned the water warden as drinks? Or drugged the bread warden as eats? Or, Yonair and Ratford pondered how to dissuade Nilia. Were they planning Ihan's grave in advance? The bigger issue was that the students of the Blue Dragon began to take Nilia's words seriously. If a hunter from the Shadow Patrol speaks like this, there's a high chance he was really kidnapped, according to my calculations. There's a 90% probability that the white tiger bastards kidnapped him. These scoundrels, I'll kill them. Everyone calm down, let's calmly plan how to kill them. Yonair sought other students in an attempt to calm the situation, the princess. But to her dismay, the princess was already among the students, seriously planning an attack on the white tiger. Yonair hung her head low. Without Ihan, there was no one in the tower who made any sense. Please come back. On Monday morning, the atmosphere in the basic magic character education class was far more menacing than usual. Normally, the class was far from being in good spirits. Everyone always had a gloomy aura, as if they were dragged to a grave. But today was different. The students of the Blue Dragon glared as if they were ready to attack at any moment, sparks flying from their eyes. Can't you say where Warden as is? How can you spout such nonsense, you blue dragon fools? Do you think we would do such a thing? We don't do such acts. You dare gang up three against one. A white tiger student's face reddened when their sore spot was hit. A student from the blue dragon menacingly waved his staff, as if ready to cast a curse, tell us where Warden as is. We're also confused, because two of us have disappeared, didn't you kidnap them? The Blue Dragon students were infuriated by the response of the White Tiger students. They dared to insult the honor of their noble lineage, us? Us? Do you dare speak like that knowing our family's honor? People who sneak into others' dorm towers at night have no right to talk, Jigil said mockingly. This time, 
it was the Blue Dragon students who were hit in their sore spot. However, there was an unexpected opponent, Gainondo, we've never done that, do you have proof? If you have proof, bring it, show us the evidence that we did it, is that guy really royalty? The White Tiger students murmured among themselves, even among the Black Tortoise students, there was no one as shameless as this, I don't think it's my place to interfere, but if you really kidnapped Warden as, wouldn't it be better to return him and reconcile? Class is about to start soon? In the Black Tortoise, the dwarf, no, the elf student Sako Tatanta opened his mouth, the white tiger students frowned as if wondering where he came in, but the black tortoise students behind Sako stood their ground, each of them, with their rough backgrounds, was not easily intimidated, even by students from knightly families, the students of the immortal phoenix also spoke up, priestesses Sienna and Tijaling cautiously said, if you have kidnapped Mr. Ehan of the Wardeness family, it would be better to return him, no, we didn't. Being suspected by students of all three towers, the White Tiger students could not hold back their frustration, they too had lost two of their own and had spent the night wondering, was it Warden As who kidnapped them? Were there? Really two missing? But we lost even when three of us attacked, the cunning students of the Blue Dragon were stirring the atmosphere strangely, Jigil stepped forward to manage the situation the leading elf of the White Tiger students, chewing her lip as if displeased with the whole situation, said, I swear on the name of my family, we did not lay a finger on Warden as, if you don't believe me, ask the other students here, some of them have ties with your side? There were others in the White Tiger like Rowena, a follower of Princess Aiden Art, and Dalgiu, considered somewhat reliable, as all eyes turned to them, Rowena carefully replied, Your Highness, from what I see, there seemed to be no plan of kidnapping. At her words, the students of the Blue Dragon's gaze shifted to the princess, who shook her head, coldly, clearly not believing them, Your Highness. Your Highness? Rowena felt as if the sky was falling, shocked that the princess she served did not believe her words, the students of the Blue Dragon became emboldened, see, she doesn't believe it. Indeed, hiding some suspicious schemes, dodge you of the Choi family. We'd like to hear your opinion, what do you think? Jigil, determined not to be outdone, also pressed dodge you, go on, tell us what you think. Dodge you realized that Jigil's voice could not get any colder, a sign of extreme anger, had it not been for the presence of other tower students. Curses, and dual swords might have been drawn, in my opinion, I haven't heard of any kidnapping plans, there, you see. But I'm not finished yet. Mixed reactions followed? Jigil turned to Daljiu and asked, You don't doubt my word when I've sworn on my family's name, do you? Daljiu hesitated slightly, before entering the Magic Academy, Daljiu would have replied, If you say so, then I must believe you but his thoughts had changed after joining the school, if Ihan of the renowned Wardeness family could misuse his family name so freely, there was no reason Jigil couldn't, Choi. You really? Just as Jigil was about to argue in an almost horrified voice, the temperature in the classroom dropped, everyone could feel it, good morning. What were you doing? Nothing at all? Just exchanging greetings. Despite their anger towards each other, the students were not foolish enough to confess everything in front of the skull principal. In this hellish school, there were certain unspoken rules, one of them was to keep silent in front of the skull principal. Were you fighting just now? Don't you want to fight more? It seems there has been a misunderstanding. How well do we get along? The skull principal clicked his tongue, apparently disappointed, the students who had been glaring at each other as if ready to kill, now seemed inclined to reconcile, boring lot. All right then, did anyone bring the leave permit? An awkward silence followed, the skull principal spoke as if he had expected this, such a disappointment, no one. Your seniors always completed these tasks on time, if Ihan were here, he would have probably said, don't fall for such nonsense, unfortunately, Ihan was already on the island for advanced studies, 
the students were disheartened and looked dejected. Can't be helped, this time, I'll give you a chance, stand up. Everyone, walk to the lake. The students were taken aback by the unexpected generosity of the skull principal. Of course, they didn't know what awaited them on the island, as Ihan always said, one should be suspicious when the skull principal is kind. The skull principal watched with glee as the students walked towards the lakeside. The lake was initially too difficult for the freshmen to cross on their own. The skull principal hadn't really expected the students to complete the task. He started with a task knowing that. If he suddenly said, cross the lake to the island, during class, someone might suspect or run away, by giving them an impossible task and then seeming to generously allow them to cross the lake, even the smartest? Freshmen couldn't suspect anything. How long had the skull principal been teaching students at this magic academy? The freshman could never escape from the palm of his hand. Wait a minute, where did that brat of the warden's family go? Thinking of a nickname Ihan would find annoying, the skull principal rotated his floating head 360 degrees. Still, Ihan was nowhere to be seen. The principal wondered if Ihan had already crossed the lake, although Wardenaz was a freshman. He was no ordinary mage. It wouldn't be strange if he had tried to cross, but even if he had, the moment he set foot on the beach, he should have been transferred to the underground dungeon, even if he was lucky enough to avoid it. Jorvan II, waiting on the sandy beach, would have caught him, if he skipped class for some other reason, he's lucky, but if he's already on the island, that's unfortunate, since the trial in the dungeon wouldn't start until students from different towers arrived together, it was meant for them to fight, or rather, to bond, what if someone crossed the lake over the weekend, they would just have to sit in the underground and wait, tinkle, with a twinkle in his eyes, the skull principal created a path of ice on the lake, the students marveled at the feat of raising thick ice over the lake with just a glance, surely none of you will be too frightened to retreat now. Especially not an Imerbard? Where only the Empire's finest are gathered. Pair up and start, do we have to pair up? A student asked, to which the skull principal kindly replied, if you'll all go up together, You'll break the ice, and just feed the monsters under the lake. We'll go in pairs. The reason for not sending them in groups was simple. If that had happened, one or two might escape the sandy beach and skate. The students were sent in pairs to prevent any from escaping. This was the educational philosophy of the skull principal, who oversaw the Empire's premier magic academy, the students. Crossed the lake, two by two, on a path made of ice? However, as the first students set foot on the sandy beach, the skull principal felt a sharp sense of unease with his keen instincts. This unease soon became a reality. The students did not sink into the sandy beach as expected. The skull principal felt a pain as if his non-existent soul was being torn apart, seeing his carefully planned lecture going awry. Why? What? The students nearby were startled by the principal's anguished voice. They had never heard such sorrow in his voice before. Why? Jorvan II, I gave you a name and you dare to be so insolently lazy. Just as the skull principal was about to call his summon, he realized that Jorvan II had been unsummoned. The missing boy from the warden's family, the disobedient Sandy Beach, Jorvan II unsummoned, all these signs pointed to only one conclusion. When the impossible is excluded, whatever remains, however improbable, must be the truth. The skull principal felt he hadn't been this shocked in centuries, Wardenaz. Wardenaz, you rascal. As if answering his call, Ihan appeared in the distance from deep within the island, his face tired and pale. Chapter 105 Inch Because of your pride, the precious learning opportunity for the students is missed. The students of the Blue Dragon, interrupting the nonsensical ramblings of the Skull Principal, exclaimed in surprise, Wardenaz. You were alive. We thought you had been kidnapped. Kidnapped? On Lego, following behind, asked in confusion, unable to comprehend, who would dare to kidnap Wardenaz, and how? Hands up. Don't move? 
If you do, I'll cast a curse. The Blue Dragon students, upon spotting on Lego and Dukma, aimed their staffs at them first. Why, why are you doing this? These cunning ones, they must have brought him to the lake to avoid leaving any evidence after kidnapping near the academy. Gainondo, a fan of the popular imperial detective novel dog Mixed Blood Detective Tavares, displayed sharp deductive skills that even Asen found plausible. It wasn't a kidnapping. We were just exploring the lake and got drifted away. Oh, is that so? Well then, be more careful next time. Upon hearing Ihan's words, the Blue Dragon students quickly lowered their staffs. The White Tiger students were so dumbfounded that they could only gape in disbelief. How shameless can these nobles be? They had been quite different when they first enrolled. It was a mystery how they had changed so much. Aren't you going to apologize? You accused us of being kidnappers and just left it at that. No, in this happy moment of finding our lost friends. Do we really need to argue over who was wrong? Aren't you being too harsh? You're worse than scoundrels. While a few of the White Tiger students argued heatedly, most were more concerned with something else. On Lego, are you okay? Any breaks or injuries? Did Wardenaz cast any strange magic on you? Dukma, how many fingers am I holding up? Remember the name of my family? Tell me, the White Tiger students were deeply concerned about the well-being of On Lego and Dukma, who had spent the night with Ihan, they feared the worst, that they might have been victims of some vile dark magic. Don't worry, everyone, it was chaotic, but, nothing much happened with Wardenaz, in fact, we owe our lives to him, Wardenaz defeated a summoned creature hiding in the sands of the beach, without him, we all would have been dragged down, on Lego and Dukma shared their experiences with the gathering students, the story of the Skull Principal's evil scheme and how Wardeness thwarted it. It was such an interesting tale that students from other towers gathered to listen. It's unbelievable, could they have been brainwashed by Wardeness? No matter what, it's hard to believe, some students of the White Tiger shook their heads in disbelief. So, the principal created a dungeon under the sandy beach of the island, summoned a monster, and gave the students assignments to naturally lead them there. It was a story too hard to believe. However, the students soon learned the truth of it. The skull principal himself began confessing everything. Well done. You did well, Warden As. Because of you, other students missed the chance to learn. But still, well done. I'm sorry, Ihan apologized, though he found it ridiculous, it was better not to upset the already sullen skull principal, being narrow-minded was, after all, a trait inherent to professors, the skull principal, feeling unjustly wronged and regretful, continued to grumble and reveal everything he had prepared, upon hearing what had been prepared beneath the sands of the beach, the faces of the students who had crossed the lake turned pale with shock, he had prepared such a thing. Shouldn't we report this person to His Majesty, the Emperor? Shu? Shu? Be quiet, do you want to be dragged under the sand? After grumbling for a while, the Skull Principal seemed somewhat appeased and addressed Ihan, anyway, managing to obtain a leave permit on your own, I must commend you for that. As he spoke, Ihan's broken arm was completely healed, Ihan bowed his head, thank you, because of you. Next year's freshmen will face even harsher trials. It is truly regrettable. Of course, Ihan didn't really feel regretful. It wasn't his fault. After all, and I didn't do it all by myself. Ihan pointed to On Lego and Dukma. Normally, when committing illegal acts, accomplices should be well rewarded. Now that he had created fake leave permits, the two were basically accomplices. However, the two students from the White Tiger shook their heads. We didn't do anything. In reality, it was all done by Wardenaz. I know that. Do you think I'm blind? I never intended to give you two special points from the start. The Skull Principal had a talent for making the same words sound infuriating. They hadn't expected something like your friendship and honor are commendable. I will give you all special points. But hearing it like that, 
it was indeed infuriating, let's see after graduation, really, let's see after we graduate, having made enemies of the two white tiger students, the skull principal turned his gaze back to Ihan, and he said, Ihan of the Wardeness family, for accomplishing a special task that the other Ironheads couldn't, I'll give you special points, now? Show me the leave permit, Ihan took out the leave permit and placed it on his palm. The moment a light flashed in the skull principal's eyes, the leave permit disappeared, having been teleported to one of the principal's storerooms. While the swindled Ihan remained silent, the other students were startled, even those who usually held back their fear of the principal couldn't contain themselves this time. Principal, this isn't what you promised. How can you so easily break your promise to us? Have you forgotten your honor? When did I ever break a promise? Instead of getting angry or intimidating, the skull principal simply asked in return, his brazen question was enough to slightly unsettle the students, was the skull principal trying to act shamelessly, like Ganondo, but principal, you said, if we completed this task, you would give us a leave permit, oh dear, oh dear, it seems you all wasted your time in basic imperial language and logic, what exactly did I say? The exact words of the skull principal? There is an island on that lake, I've hidden a leave permit there, work together and bring it to me, Dash, clearly showed that he had never said he would give them a leave permit, he had only said to bring it to him, the skull principal, seeing the students' faces, and feeling slightly better, spoke kindly, now you understand how important every single word in a contract is, don't you? It's good that you all learned a valuable lesson. Ihan couldn't even guess how many of the students present would come looking to assassinate the principal after graduation. If looks could kill, the skull principal would have already fallen dead. In a twist of events, the dragon brat, no, Wardenaz, was called upon by the skull principal to voice his thoughts. Do you think I've deceived you? Did he just call me dragon brat? Ihan was not fooled by the skull principal's soft voice. A student must always respond humbly to a professor's inquiry about any grievances, acknowledging their own fault in using the professor's concern. To protest further would risk being sent beneath the sands of the beach. No, principal, I never harbored any desire for the leave permit from the beginning. Why would I have any complaints? The skull principal looked at Ihan with a mix of admiration and regret. Ihan was an extraordinarily talented student, not only in magic, but also in other skills. Usually, magic talent and self-control were inversely proportional. Talent often bred arrogance. Even students with half of Ihan's talent would brazenly challenge the principal as freshmen, only to learn humility after a few stints in the punishment room. Yet, this boy from the Wardeness family possessed an unbelievable combination of talent and self-restraint. Admirable and remarkable as it was, the skull principal couldn't help feeling a sense of loss, there was no fun in it. He's not taking the bait, the skull principal was not disappointed, though, time was on his side, and another opportunity would present itself, very well, everyone should take a lesson from Wardenaz, do you understand? Yes, we understand? Ihan, though not versed in mind reading, could almost hear the students' thoughts. The most pressing concern wasn't the mages who might seek revenge on the skull principal in the future. I never expected the principal to do this. What a relief! Ihan inwardly sighed in relief. He hadn't anticipated that the skull principal would actually take away the leave permit, but luck was on his side. In a moment of quick thinking, he had presented a fake permit, and the principal had not noticed. Making it disappear, on Lego and Dukma looked at Ihan, their faces a mix of astonishment and disbelief. Could he have prepared for this scenario? What are you, Warden As? Though Ihan hadn't anticipated this exact situation and created the fake permits, the two could only misconstrue, Warden As, how did you? Shoo, be quiet, Ihan placed a finger to his lips, the skull principal was still nearby. If he sensed something amiss and retrieved the permit from his storeroom, Ihan would be heading not to the beach sands but to the punishment room. Can we really accept such a valuable item? 
Onlego and Dukma carefully tucked the fake leave permit into their pockets, wary of being seen, Ihan hadn't just created one for himself. He had also forged permits for Onlego and Dukma in his spare time. The mere pieces of paper felt as heavy as gold. Use them carefully, especially. Do not use it when the principal is around. If caught, you'll be apprehended immediately. Of course, we understand, Warden As. The two students from the White Tiger took Ihan's warning seriously. And moved on, Ihan was left wondering, but will these fake leave permits actually work? He had made them, yet even he wasn't sure of their effectiveness. Perhaps they might work if used when the principal was not around and with permission from another professor. The problem Ihan faced was dealing with the aftermath of their return. Would they lock me in the punishment room for about a month? Initially, Ihan decided to observe his friends from the White Tiger using the fake leave permits before making any moves, although he possessed a real one. Using it while the Skull Principal was around felt risky, following the path that had appeared over the lake, the students made their way back as they had come, Ihan also hurried to prepare for departure, he was apprehensive that the Skull Principal, although it seemed unlikely, might dismiss him and remove the ice path? Leaving him stranded, the water spirit waved at Ihan, signaling a farewell, thank you, without you. I might still be wandering around the island, the water spirit appeared to blush at the gratitude, this sight sparked a sudden thought in Ihan, wait, have I just become friends with a spirit? Upon reflection, this felt like a more natural closeness than the shouting matches he'd had with beings like for Kuntra, Ihan opened his mouth to speak, perhaps you and I could, but the water spirit, not waiting to hear Ihan's words, dashed off and began frolicking in front of Nilia who was about to leave. It seemed as if the spirit was pleading for a contract with her, Ihan felt a deep sense of betrayal.